Welcome to Faith Positive Radio with Dr. Joey Fawcett, the Christian business coaching conversation that increases your faith with greater joy at work so you love God and others more. Dr. Joey interviews Christian business professionals just like you to discover their secrets for working faith positive in a negative world. Welcome to Faith Positive Radio with Dr. Joey Fawcett. Faith Positive Nation. Wow, really excited today because we're going to talk about not just faith at work, but how um, the subject of money affects not only your work, but your marriage as well. We so often get questions from business owners, you know, how do I financially incentivize my employees? How do I reward their good work with money? And then typically we hear in the more personal moments, you know, my wife and I, we argue about money, or my husband and I have plenty of challenges. Well, today we're going to answer all the questions about that for you. All in 30 minutes, right? <laughs> okay. We're, we're going to get a running start on them anyway. It it's, gives me a great deal of pleasure today to present to you from Faith Positive Atlanta, down with our uh, regional leader, Perry Rue. Greg Sinatra is with us today. Greg is a financial consultant with Thrive It Financial, uh, combining faith and finances for good. And I want you to tell us how faith and finance is combined for good, Greg. But on behalf of Faith Positive Nation, let me welcome you to the Faith Positive Radio today. Thanks for the gift of your time, buddy. Thanks so much for having me here. Glad to be with you. Oh, man, it's a, it's a real delight. Greg and I were together recently at one of our Faith Positive experiences down in Atlanta, and I had the opportunity to meet him in person. So I don't always get that with my Faith Positive Radio guests. So thanks so much for uh, agreeing to come on today. So what does your daily work look like? Because you're really speaking into people's lives at a very intimate level. It's not everybody we sit down and talk about money with. So a couple walks in, I would imagine, and they sit down across the desk from you, and it's obvious that money is a sore subject. Not that that would ever happen, but let's just hypothetically, right? It, it does happen uh, a good bit of the time, um, you know, and it, it speaks a lot to the health of a marriage, you know, on how they can dialogue when it comes to that. And I think once you can sit down and help people embrace, you know, and maybe remind them, especially as we work with Christians, uh, that God owns it all. Mm. And so you can let go and let God and realize it's all his possessions anyway. You're just there to be a good steward. Then you can get into teamwork, uh, certainly within a marriage uh, being teamwork and uh, work together to, uh, to honor him and honor um, his, to his glory, to his kingdom. So. Yeah. And, and I guess intellectually, we know this is God's sandbox and we just get to play in it. Right. But emotionally, wow, there's so much energy tied up around money. What, what is that all about in your experience, particularly for Christians? which maybe there's not a lot of difference between the way Christians handle money, you know, by and large, and now the rest of the world handles it sometimes, right? Yeah, well, I think a lot of it has to do with in uh, the world we live in, we're always imposed upon by that secular view, you know, whether sometimes it's consumerism and, and uh, the whatnot, and the world tells us you need to have this or do this or have this lifestyle, uh, when in fact, um, I don't know, God has 2,350 verses in the Bible that talk about money. Literally, that's literally 2,350. That's correct. That's wow. Correct. So you figure that's a very important topic for him. So it could be an important topic for us. And yeah. we listen to what he says about that. And I know sometimes it's easier said than done, but that's where his grace is. Involved. And, uh, you know, it's the opportunity for us to be his children and to uh, manage what's really his. So really you're in the business of helping, helping people transform their attitude towards money and adopt yeah. a more biblical view. Yeah, yeah, what's their relationship with money? And, um, and that also speaks to their relationship with each other, and most importantly, their relationship with him, with God. Yeah, 2,350 verses, huh? Yep. Yeah, wow, you counted them, right? Okay, all right. <laughs> Actually, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give some kudos to uh, the good people like Kingdom Advisors, and I'm a certified Kingdom Advisor. Oh, okay. And um, they're the so really, I think I've embraced that. Uh, you can certainly go to kingdomadvisors.com and check that out. And that's Ron Blue's organization, right? That is correct. Yeah, wow. They've done a phenomenal job of helping CFPs and other financial consultants really understand a biblical view of money. So tell us what a biblical view of money is based around. You, you've bannered around the word stewardship a couple times now, and steward. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, to be a little historical, do you know where, where the word stewardship comes from? You, you break it down, it's actually sty ward. Sty is in pigsty, unfortunately. Ward is in being the manager 
you know, as an award or the whatnot. So you put Stye Award together that's steward. So it's managing possessions and that's where it comes from. So managing pig slop, is that what you just told me? It could have been. <laughs> no, I mean <laughs> well, well pigs, I mean, you know, they're important. I, I like bacon. Right? <laughs> so I'm glad somebody's managing the bacon. Oh, and we're bringing home exactly. the bacon. I got it now. Okay. Stewardship mm -hmm. it just took on a whole new meaning for me. Thank you, Greg. I love it. So it's what, what does he tell us that he wants us to do with his position, his possessions that he entrusts us to? And, you know, it was sort of relieving when uh, even in my own home, let's just say that we had um, we had an issue in the kitchen that was more cosmetic in nature. And my wife says, well, what are you going to do about that? And I said, wow, you know, this is God's house. And I guess I need to keep his house in the best possible condition I can. And so, Oh, I thought you were laid off my mind that it wasn't my own home I needed to repair. It was rather God's house I was repairing. It. Oh, okay. It's not your relationship, it's your attitude, it's your approach. You know, man, that's beautiful because I was afraid you were going to say, well, "This is God's house, so I'm going to pray about it. Let Him send somebody over." <laughs> <laughs> that might be the way you have to manage it if that's not your skill set. But you know, yeah. it falls on you to to take care of what He's given you in order to advance His kingdom and and uh, bring Jesus to everybody. Oh, yeah. And you're reminding me of what Jesus said was you can't serve God and mammon or money. You got to make a choice as to which comes first. So really what you're helping people do is to learn to live in the world, but not of the world instead of just strictly of the world with all the conspicuous consumerism and going into debt to get stuff to jockey for a position with your neighbors over the use of stuff. Right. Correct. Yeah. So how, how is Thrivent Financial different from other organizations? Sure, sure. We're a member-owned organization of Christians, and we help people be wise with money, inspire them to be generous, make a difference in their community. So how might we support them in being generous? Well, we're actually a not-for-profit organization, but a little bit different than what you would normally uh, think of as a not-for-profit, say, your church. Um, we're actually a fraternal benefit society. And what that means is we're exempt from paying any corporate taxes, uh, specifically on risk protection products. So when someone owns a risk protection product with us, they are a member of Thrive and Financial. We then turn around to our members, of which there's over 2 million, and say, what would you like to do with this resource that we would have paid in taxes to the federal government or the state government? What would you like to do with that to make a difference in your community? And sometimes that is to support a ministry at their church. Sometimes it's supporting Habitat and going out and building a home, sometimes it's another very important cause uh, to that person uh, to live out their citizenship in this great country and take full advantage of what God also owns called the Internal Revenue Code. You know, I, I think that's just wonderful. He gives us so many resources to go out and be generous, and that, that is a part of the Internal Revenue Code that I've shared with you. So, Wow. So you guys take, um, because you're a member benefit organization, mm -hmm. fraternal organization, you take what you would pay in taxes and give it back to the members to invest in their local community? Correct. And we don't actually give it to the members as much as we give them access to utilize it, and it may go directly to the cause, to the nonprofit that they're supporting. Okay. So I get to choose where that money goes. Exactly. Either by doing an action or, in some cases, actually granting of money where please send X dollars to said nonprofit cause. And those are all tax dollars. It's not sharing profits uh, or anything like that. It, it really is redirection of uh, tax exempt monies. Wow, that's incredible. So I'm not only getting biblically based financial advice, mm -hmm. and I'm not only learning how to keep a positive spiritual attitude around money and how to improve my marriage and my work life and things like that, because I've now got a biblical view of money, but I'm also being generous with my community. Is that what you're telling me? That is correct. That's correct. And then it's an empowering that individual to say, well, what's an important cause? Um, you know, sometimes it's around homelessness. Sometimes it's around hunger. Sometimes it's around God's creatures, you know. Animals. Yeah, SPCA or something. Exactly. exactly. Oh, wow. Any number of things. Any number of things. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's awesome. And so that's by benefit of Thrivent Financial being the type of organization it is. That is correct. Yeah. And that's the members that make that possible because they're the ones that, you know, have a contract with us that would uh -huh. that tax exempt money. So, yes. Wow. So how did you get involved? Oh, wow. Um, I've been with the organization 13 years, and I actually was serving in a volunteer capacity uh, before I came to work uh, for Thrivent. Um, was on a, a local county-based board that was uh, facilitating uh, an older program we had, and that's what 
um, got me genuinely introduced. I've been a member of Thriving since I was a teenager, so I've known the company a long time. Mm, okay. All right. So you were volunteering and then decided, hey, I can do this for a living. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Man, that's so cool. I love it when people are working out of their divine design in response to God's calling. That's beautiful. Exactly. So tell us what are some of these key biblical concepts about money that we, people like me, find so helpful once they learn them? Well, um, I guess there's so many different ways to apply it. Um, I, I would have to start with it's what's in, in your heart. Uh, mm -hmm. meaning, um, here's maybe a good example. I was chatting with clients the other day and um, was saying, well, if you keep a budget, have you taken time, you and your spouse, to sit down and go through your budget, maybe line item by line item, and say, is this a particular line item that God is blessing? And if you give a thumbs up to it, great. Then it sounds like that's something you ought to keep, keep doing. And maybe there's, you know, prayer involved and certainly discussion with God to, to really let him talk to you. But maybe you come to another line item where um, it's a, no, I don't really think he's blessing that. Maybe he wants to it, maybe he's not anymore, maybe he won't future. But if it's not now, then maybe that's something you might want to consider redirecting. And maybe the trickiest ones are, I'm not real sure what God is saying about this particular line. Mm -hmm. That's where you definitely go back in prayer and say, let's see what God is going to share with us about what should we do. So I think that's where you come back to, there's so many verses in the Bible that might give you some inspiration and an opportunity for him to, to talk to you and mm. uh, what, uh, what is blessing, what he's not blessing. Yeah. So how many people that come to you actually have a budget that they're working out of? Wow, I get a spectrum on that, and it's also a level of detail, too. Some people down to the penny, and they've got it all buttoned up. And i got other folks out there where they hope it's going to work out okay at the end, and sometimes that's where they're asking for some guidance and counsel, and we certainly can help with that. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's, that's just one of many areas that we can help folks with. Sure. Yeah, so do more people have budgets than don't, or more people don't than do? I probably lean towards uh, more don't than do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my experiences would indicate that as well. Now, what I just heard you saying was that we look through, first of all, we do a budget, right? Mm -hmm. And if nothing else, we do a snapshot of where our money's going. So we look at credit card receipts or bank statements or something like that. Where's our money going? How are we spending our money? That's a reality check for most of us, right? Yeah, yeah. Have you been intentional? And you know, here's something else to consider. Let's say that we're talking with someone who feels really passionate about their tithe and hmm. how they can give back. Is it spontaneous giving or is it intentional giving? Hmm. You know, and what's God calling you to do even when it comes to being generous and, and giving back? Do you have a plan for your generosity? Hmm. Yeah. Spontaneous, but you know, I, I think most of us are lean towards spontaneity and maybe not so much towards planning, even when it comes to giving. Yeah, which means God sometimes gets whatever's left over at the end of the month, right? Is I it mean, first fruits? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not first fruits, it's last fruits, right? <laughs> but but first fruits would be something very intentional. Yeah. So so really again what you're talking about is asking God what God wants us to do with our money. Yes. Yeah. So uh I'm drilling it down to decisions like, Hey God, uh, do you want us to buy a car? Our, yeah. our, our old one is breaking down. Our needs have changed. We added to our family or our kids who were grown and we got into small two seaters now have grandchildren. So, you know, we need, yeah. we need to get back into something else. Just asking God to participate in a financial decision. Uh, what, what's most people's hesitancy about that? Um, I, I think it's like everyone's human nature, and I'll start with my own, and that is I have my own plan. I want to do it my way, uh, like a cousin of mine once said. And sometimes it's not exactly <laughs> okay, hang on, hang on. A cousin of his, right? <laughs> that was Frankie, right? <laughs> do we do we do? Uh, <laughs> my some, way. I got it. I got it. What God has in mind, and it's what I've got in mind, and I, I, I think that's probably where we all, you know, have a challenge. Right. So it's the struggle for control. Sure, sure. We, of course we want to be in control. It's our human nature, right? It is, and that's why the first commandment says, don't have any other gods before me. And unfortunately, we all have other gods before him, and usually it's ourselves, right? That, that, that's right. I mean, we can fall into that trap, uh, any one of us, uh, you know, temptations of the world. And um, mm -hmm. thank, thank goodness uh, Jesus died for us on the cross, and mm -hmm. uh, his grace is so abundant, and his love is so abundant for us 
that he no longer repeatedly screw up. He, um, he comes back to, to, to lift us up. So. Yeah. I like that verse. that talks about how patient God is. Yeah. <laughs> you yes. know, he won't keep his anger forever, but he's really patient. <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad for that. But, you know, thinking about that control issue. So often that's got to be the presenting symptom to you as a financial consultant uh, with couples who come to you and want some help financial planning. I mean, it's, it's, jockeying for position over who's in control of the, of the cash flow, right? Right. Well, and you know, a lot of times you find in a couple, typically one is going to be the lead on uh, this topic and, and the other is going to participate or, or not in some cases. And I think a lot of times it just has to do with, is there an open line of communication, you know, between two spouses, uh, mm. money, um, you know, in my own marriage, um, my wife does handle a lot more of the day to day of what goes on, uh, within our family range right. planning, uh, as a certified financial planner. Um, I certainly will, you know, have that professional point of view, but, but also personally does it mean for us? And that's where we try to collaborate and uh, have balance. Um, works well most of the time. Every now and then we have some good dialogue, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or as a friend of mine calls it intense fellowship. <laughs> <laughs> The new one for me. That's good. Yeah, we, my, yeah, we have some intense fellowship around this issue. And <laughs> I'm like, ah, okay. You guys argue, don't you? <laughs> Every couple argues, right? Because you're passionate about something and you're you're trying to figure out the control thing. Well, what I just heard you said is she's more in touch with what it costs to go to the grocery store and things like that, the day-to-day -day operations, the the light bill and different things like that, what that cost and what the goods are, because it's easy to say, oh, you overspent at the grocery store, but if you haven't been to the grocery store lately, you know, do you really have any right. reality to speak out of regarding that? So I love the collaborative approach to that that you guys take. That's How right. do you encourage that when a couple comes to you and, and says, you know, we, we know we need to do something financially and, and it's obvious that they haven't done a whole lot collaboratively. Well, I am not a uh, professional marriage counselor. By any sense of the mean. <laughs> Nor do you pretend to be. So every now and then we might slip into that role. And if anything, I would say at least opening up a dialogue of communication, uh, you know, between uh, two spouses, um, you know, sometimes we're that, maybe neutral ground where they're mm. taking them out of life just to sit down and focus on this topic. And it gives them a chance to have some dialogue together. Um, you know, about that, that maybe they get caught up, you know, in that whirlwind of life that we all have mm. and uh, don't take the time. So sometimes it's just, they're taking time to sit down and chat with someone and it's me. And, and that's what's opening up the dialogue that in and of itself could be a huge positive. Oh yeah. It could. And having that third person in the room helps too, because we, we tend to want to be a little better, act a little better, you know, when, when we do that. Now, what about Christians in the workplace who come to you and say, how do I wisely invest my money? And I've got certain beliefs. I refer to them as core values about certain issues. How do I wisely invest my money around these hot buttons for me, for instance? Yeah. I mean, as that is important for a client, uh, you know, we can, uh, sit down and, and, and listen to what, what are those values and try to um, adhere to what they're looking for um, when it comes to that. Um, I think the other thing that's out there too is oftentimes, you know, say in corporate America, mm. you've got a, a retirement plan and you've got certain choices that the employer provides to you and that's what you can choose from to participate in a 401k or some other kind of retirement plan. Um, but it doesn't mean that's the only place where you can participate. You certainly can uh, have other, um, you know, investment opportunities, um, you know, outside of your employer's plan. And maybe that gives you some other choices. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, the other thing too, that fits into all of that is not to neglect um, proper protection for your family, whether it's protecting your income, say in the event of a disability or protecting, uh, what if there's an unexpected loss, uh, the Lord calls somebody home, mm -hmm. than what we had thought, mm -hmm. it's a death in the family, you know, what, what have you done to, uh, to address that and make sure that, uh, you know, surviving spouse, even children, how are they going to be financially cared for even if you're not here? Yeah. Yeah. And there's so many stories where families have been cared for because people like you came into a relationship with someone who decided to take life insurance and then they passed away unexpectedly. And so that family, it, it's hard enough to live without that parent 
you know, whether it's a mom or a dad uh, or a spouse, a husband or wife, but to have that financial burden released and to have your family cared for, that's just huge. You know, that that's part of good stewardship, right? It is. It is. It's, it's another tool that God gives us in his toolbox for us to use. And so as it's appropriate for someone's situation uh, to have the, you know, the right solution in place, mm -hmm. uh, pleases God, then, hey, then hopefully we've got alignment. Mm, pleases God. Wow. I really love, Greg, your focus on including God in these decisions. You know, so often we don't get that. We just get, okay, let's go for the guy who seems to have the most expert advice or something. But a repetitive theme I'm hearing from you is we go to God with it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And God also calls us to use, uh, you know, a really key tool, and that's our brain. <laughs> so, he expects us to do our due diligence and to... Uh, uh -huh to use that wonderful tool he gives us. So uh, you're right. We, we have to uh, make decisions, you know, from the heart, but he also gives us our brain too, to, to be intelligent, uh, oh, yeah. thoughtful decisions uh, about what's going on. So it's both. I think it was the apostle Paul that talked about praying for the mind of Christ. Yeah. 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 Well, I know where the mind of Joey takes me. So I definitely pray for the mind of Christ <laughs> each and every day, you know, just, just help me focus on those positive things that God's doing around me and to filter out the negative world. Right. Exactly. And that's hard to do, but you're right. That's, that's our opportunity and our challenge all at the same time. Isn't it? it is an opportunity and a challenge. And one of the great things we enjoy helping Faith Positive Nation do, because God's always at work and through people like you who are out there helping us focus on what God's doing. So you're a business person, you're a Christian business person yourself. What, what kinds of challenges do you face in your own business, Greg? Yeah. You know, I'd say even though, it is a uh, you know a Christian business and a Christian corporation I work for. Sure. We have a lot of the same challenges others uh, do in, in running uh, running our business. Um, same opportunities as well. Um, so, in some respects, the worldly challenges are in, in a lot of ways n no different. What maybe is different is um, where I can. Uh, you heard me say up front that hey, uh, we're a member-owned organization of Christians. I have the opportunity to lead with the cross in a conversation. Uh, mm. um, um, I don't know that every employer in the United States would embrace that idea. Um, thank God my Fortune 500 company that I work for does. Wow. And so that's a blessing to work for this organization. Mm, yeah, it is. Where are you guys about 318 on the Fortune 500? I think I read. We just got uh, to 316. Um, Congratulations. So, yeah, we we're right, right in that spot. Exactly. Uh -huh. well, wonderful. It's good to see a non tech company among the Fortune 500. Exactly. <laughs> Seems like one, one of the few non profit Fortune 500s out there. So, wow. Um, once again, key point there was we lean with the cross. So, performance is good, but uh, mm. you know, it's, it's, it's also, hey, we, Jesus is first. Yeah, Jesus is first, uh, but you also that also means that you as a Christian business person do everything with excellence as unto the Lord himself, right? Colossians 3.23. So it gives you that unique opportunity to really put into practice what the scripture says. Exactly. We, we make that attempt every day and some days better than others. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. You're human. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> yeah, we're still east of Eden, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, that's great. I totally understand that. Well, I would imagine as a Christian business person, you said, you know, you're concerned about what we're all concerned about. I mean, there, there has to be cash flow issues, revenue generation, things like that. What are some of the, the tactics that you use to keep yourself focused on the positive God's doing and to filter out the negative? especially on those days when maybe, you know, a couple didn't sign a contract with you or, you know, you've heard no 12 times in a row, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess, you know, in the moment, sometimes your human emotion and reaction can take over. But, you know, when you step back from it, you always got to try to remember it's in God's timing. And so there may have been a reason as to why that shouldn't happen now that we don't understand. And Isn't that typical in anything in life? And the certainly true in my business is it seems like it's something that should have happened. It didn't. I don't understand why, and I want an answer why. <laughs> it doesn't mean I deserve an answer why from God. And he's ready to tell me, he'll let me know. That's right. That's all to deal with sometimes, but it's, yeah. it, it is, I guess, how I try to approach it differently is, you know, it's just, uh, well, it's in God's time, and he's got some reason as to why this isn't supposed to happen now. And then the other thing is 
sometimes things happen that were unexpected, which are really quite joyous. And you go, holy moly, how, how did this take place? Uh, I'm so glad that it did, but I really don't know how or why. Sometimes that can happen too. And once again, you're reminded, yeah, it's not all about you, uh, Greg. It's, uh, it's in his timing. Uh, there was some reason why that was supposed to happen. And uh, it was something he was blessing. And I don't know why either in that case. <laughs> oh. yeah. Yeah. So uh, I didn't see that coming, whether it's, you know, it seems like the, the business you thought you were going to write that day doesn't come. So you, well, I didn't see that coming. And then you write business that you didn't see coming. Right. Yeah. I, I think it's to remind us that God's really in control. Yes. You know, unfortunately, I, I so know what you're talking about because the timing issue, you know, I want to know why and I want to know now. Yeah. I, I, I just don't want to wait. I'm not really patient. So I'm back to thank God. God's patient and uh, much more so than I am. Right. That's right. That's yeah. But right. it's, a, it's that need to control. We want to know what happened and why. And releasing control is all about faith, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is. It really is. And it's what you just said a minute ago. He's always control. And he, and he owns everything, as we talk about stewardship. And so right. when you realize, hey, you know what? I'm here to be his child and to um, open up my mind, open up my heart, open up my, my ears to what is he you know, saying to me? What is he calling me to do to be in his field today to go do his work? If you put it in that perspective, Hopefully, it gives you some, you know, comfort in knowing he's going to take care of you. Um, every now and then, I even remind myself, if he is certainly capable of, of, of feeding mm. birds of this world, I think he's also capable of, of feeding me. And, and mm. I, you know, so. yeah, and and the birds don't worry at all, do they? No, far less <laughs> just, them, right? Yeah, they just eat and sing, and that's yeah. and make baby birds, and that's pretty much their existence. That's right. Yeah. Well, man, it, it's wonderful to, to chat with you about money in such a relaxed way. So I want to thank you for that because so many of us in Faith Positive Nation, it's a turbocharged issue. I mean, it's, it's always at a low boil. We're not sure about our money, but uh, with you and then also Jennifer Nankowski, who's been on uh, Faith Positive Radio before, I really like the biblical approach. Uh, well, I absolutely love that, but I also like the intentionality behind the way you discuss it. And it's not any kind of high pressure thing. It's just, look, this is all God's money. Let's figure out how God's talking to you about your money and what God wants you to do with it. And as soon as we figure that out, the rest is just a tool, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Being intentional. Exactly right. I love that. I love that. Well, now, how many verses are there in the Bible about money? Over 2,350. 2,350. Are, are one of those 2,350 verses one of your favorites? I think this is one of them, but one of my favorites is uh, actually Psalm 8. Uh, Psalm 8. And, which, which part of Psalm 8 do you like? Well, it could be the whole thing, but I guess I'll, uh, I'll focus on, um, you know, he talks in verse 3 and 4 about when you consider, you know, the, the heavens and the work of your fingers and the moons and the stars, mm -hmm. and all of these put in place. Mm -hmm. that in verse 4, he talks about what is mankind that you're mindful of them, human yeah. beings care for them. Hence, he's reminding us that we are his children. Mm. This is his uh, world he's placed before us to, to manage and to care for. And it's just that reminder of just being a good, a good steward. But um, mm. so yeah, it, it is it's all, made all its entirety, but it's really that's kind of getting to the heart of it. Yeah. Who am I that you should be mindful of me? One translation. I think that's around verse four. And I love that because it's that imagery of David standing out. I'm, I'm sure he was tending his sheep, you know, and he's standing out under the night sky and there's a big moon and there are all those stars. And of course they don't have any ambient light out there where he is. We, we've got street lights and things that are polluting light pollution. Right. But, right. but he can see wow into the Milky way. And so you just, you just, it's not that you're insignificant. It's just, you're seeing yourself in the whole cosmic scheme of things and reminding yourself that, God is God and you're not. Exactly. I, I absolutely love it. As you can tell, Psalm 8 is one of my favorites. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so somebody is going to want to get in touch with you, Greg. They, they want to learn more about Thrivent Financial. They want to know more about you. They want to discover more about how to be the best steward we can be with the resources that God's entrusted to us. Uh, is there an email address that Faith Positive Nation can use to reach out to you? 
Absolutely. It's uh, pretty straightforward. Gregory.Sinatra at Thrivent.com. Spell Thrivent for us. Sure. T-H-R-I-V-E-N-T. Okay. If you're on the treadmill, you know, that was for my benefit, not yours, because it's in the episode copy. So it's Gregory.Sinatra at Thrivent.com. Greg, thanks so much for the gift of your time. I love your wisdom. I love your spirit and the biblically based approach you bring to understanding stewardship and helping people invest their money God's way and, and do good with it. Cause I think that's marvelous to hear you talking about how what would be spent on taxes. Now each individual can uh, disperse towards the, the place of good that they want to choose. So thanks for being such a transformative part of communities all throughout faith positive nation, man, may God bless your work, your spat, your wife, your kids and your household. Um, you got dogs and cats. I've got cats. Yes. Cats. <laughs> You're a cat guy, huh? Okay. I'm a dog too. Oh, okay. <laughs> All over the place, right? May yeah. God bless your entire household. And especially may God bless your work because you're definitely doing his work to advance the kingdom. Thank you, Greg. Appreciate your time today. Thanks, Dr. Joey. Thanks for listening to Faith Positive Radio, the Christian business coaching conversation that increases your faith with greater joy at work so you love God and others more. Suggest guests and ask questions when you email Dr. Joey at info at getpositive.today. And be sure to get your free gift of the five positive business conversations to have today. Coaching program at getpositive.today. Until next time, may God bless you with everything your heart can hope for and more than your mind can imagine. I'm a registered representative for Thriving Investment Management, which is a wholly owned subsidiary of Thriving Financial. The views in this broadcast are the views of myself and Faith Positive that may not be those of Thrive and Financial. Any advice given during this broadcast may not be appropriate for your individual situation. Contact your financial professional, attorney, or accountant for specific advice for you and your family.